Tyson Fury is called a boxer who came back from the dead more than once for a reason. He always came out victorious, while absolutely no one gave him a single chance. The Brit is indeed a very interesting and talented boxer, who knows how to draw attention to himself like no one else and be in the center of events not only in society, but also in the world of boxing. It's time to remember how Tyson Fury fell and got up after heavy knockdowns both in and out of the boxing ring. Be sure to watch this video to the end and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed. And we're starting. In 2011, the undefeated Tyson Fury was just beginning his heavyweight division crusade. He was on a streak of 17 wins in a row without a single loss and was looking for a new opportunity to make a name for himself to both the audience and the boxing community at large. His opponent was undefeated Canadian Nevin Pajik, whom the experts gave no chance of winning. The Canadian didn't pose much of a threat to Fury, but he chose the right tactics for the fight, and from the first round he was successfully closing in, harassing the Brit with successful crosses and jabs. Fury tried to work on the counter and respond to every attack of his opponent, but these actions were not very successful. Yes, Fury was harassing his opponent, but he was missing more. Pajik worked in a dominant manner and took the first round with confidence. In the second round, Fury confidently put his hands up, demonstrating that Pajik's punches were not doing him any damage. This action infuriated the Canadian, and he rushed at Fury, delivering a devastating right cross straight to the jaw. Such a heavy blow sent Tyson to the ground, but he found the strength to get up and endure until the end of the round. Such therapy quickly brought the Brit to his senses, and everything in his head immediately fell into place. Starting from the third round, Fury became more restrained and immediately fell into place, inflicting huge damage. Such pressure quickly took its toll on Pajik, who was knocked down twice in the third round. Fury made the decision not to let Nevin go and continued the beating, which forced the referee to stop the fight. The refereeing decision looked very controversial, but the fact that Fury was able to recover and beat his opponent after one of the hardest punches of his career remains. In 2013, Tyson Fury went to the USA in an attempt to find recognition in the eyes of the American audience. As everyone knows, to be the best, you have to beat the best. So Fury chose a worthy opponent in the person of two-time world heavyweight champion Steve Cunningham. Fury wanted to show a dominant performance, so from the first round in his favorite manner, began to bully his opponent, who was much smaller than him in size. He lowered his hands, stuck out his tongue, and provoked his opponent in every way possible. And after the first round, he overstepped the limits of what was possible. As the round came to an end, the Brit walked to his opponent's corner and defiantly pushed him away. Such a gesture of disrespect simply could not go unpunished. So at the very beginning of the round, Cunningham dropped Fury with the same right cross to the ground, which caused a standing ovation from the audience. Tyson realized his mistake from the second time, and after the knockdown, began to box more cautiously and with more restraint. Fury decided to impose an open fight on Steve at close and medium range, which Cunningham could not refuse. He began to miss more and more often and made serious mistakes. He did not leave the line of attack, often lowered his hands, and did not hit his opponent in exchanges. All six rounds, Tyson confidently dominated his opponent, and the seventh round, he finally stopped being afraid of his opponent and knocked him out with a brutal uppercut. Fury's Downfall After Fight with Vladimir Klitschko Look in the mirror if you want to see your worst enemy. Fury understands the meaning of that phrase better than anyone. Having received the heavyweight legend Vladimir Klitschko as his opponent, Fury prepared very hard for this fight, giving all of himself in training. On the day of the fight, Fury managed to shock the entire boxing community by defeating the famous Ukrainian by unanimous decision of the judges. This night divided the life of the Brit into before and after. In one moment, Tyson Fury achieved everything he had been going for for all his years. He became one of the main figures in boxing, he got his first huge fee, he started to be offered good advertising contracts, and he was the center of attention. Tyson Fury's main goal was achieved, and he lost himself. He had nothing else to strive for. The Brit was at the top. First, Fury lost his IBF title because he refused to defend it. Then, Fury refused a rematch with Klitschko, arguing that he had already proved everything to everyone. Then Fury was accused of doping and disqualified, taking away all his belts. Tyson went into a deep depression, and he did all the things he never did as an athlete. 
alcohol, and drugs became his loyal friends. In 2016, Tyson Fury voluntarily refused to be a contender for the WBO title because of psychological problems, depression, apathy, and drug problems. He went from being the best heavyweight of his time to a 400 pounds tall fat man with a reckless lifestyle. In 2017, Tyson Fury officially ended his boxing career and lost his license. Thus, the Gypsy King from the top of the Boxing Olympus fell to the bottom, which gradually pulled him to the grave. Fury thought more and more about committing suicide, and one September night in a state of alcoholic intoxication, he got behind the wheel of his car and rushed towards his death. Fury accelerated to speeds of 180 miles per hour and planned to drive off the side of the road. He was saved by thoughts of his family, which directed him to turn to God and further helped him get out of the tight noose that slowly began to strangle him. As it turned out, boxing, which Fury hated, became his best friend during his rehabilitation period. The Brit began to appear in the gym and box with his father more and more often, which eventually allowed him to shed the stigma of being an alcoholic and drug addict. The Brit changed his training style, environment, and team and began the process of rehabilitating his boxing career. He regained his license and he had three warm-up fights to get in shape and get back into the world rankings. After dominating victories, Fury was confident again and dared to challenge the most feared knockout artist in his division, the undefeated Deontay Wilder. The hype around this fight was growing and the fight was officially announced. Experts believed that Fury would not pose any problems to the bronze bomber who had defended his WBO belt seven times, knocking out all other challengers. Only his family and old fans believed in Fury's victory. The boxing community believed that the Brit did not have enough speed and stamina to outbox Wilder, and to compare the two boxers and punching power is not considered logical. Tyson found himself on the floor from less dangerous opponents, and he cannot be called a puncher as he wins his fights due to an advantage in speed and technique. At the end of 2018, two undefeated boxers who wanted to tear each other apart in front of the eyes of millions of viewers around the world met in the ring. The fight with the title belt at stake promised the audience an incredible spectacle, which happened. This evening, the Brit shocked the world twice. Fury was the underdog and not in the best shape, but still managed to find an approach to his opponent, dismantling him from long and middle range. He dismantled his opponent with his jab, avoiding dangerous attacks. In the first eight rounds, Fury took six, but the second half of the fight, Tyson, in his usual manner, decided to have fun and began to banter with his opponent. Wilder felt a second breath and got involved in the fight, starting to hit his opponent very tightly and unloading a powerful series of shots. Such decisive actions brought the Brit back to normal, and he began to work tighter and increase the pace of the fight, which allowed him to accentuate the punches and take the rounds more confidently. However, in the twelfth round, something happened that will be talked about for a long time to come. Tyson Fury experienced the full destructive power of the Bronze Bomber's fists. At the beginning of the twelfth round, he missed the American's signature blows and fell to the hardest knockdown of his career. Deontay had already started celebrating the victory and climbed the ropes, but Tyson was not ready to lose. At the eight-second count, he stood up confidently and continued the fight as if nothing happened. He managed to finish the fight with honor, even countering his opponent's attacks. The judges could not reveal the winner, which caused an incredible trilogy of boxers. However, how Tyson Fury was able to recover that night is still a mystery. The rematch took place because Wilder knows how to bribe the audience with his destructive power. Fury, on the other hand, was ready to provide the audience with a manual for disarming the powerful guns of the Bronze Bomber. The second fight between the boxers was very one-sided and was not as competitive as the first. The Brit took Wilder to boxing school, knocking him down three times and brutally knocking him out of the seventh. There is no smoke without fire, and after that fight, Wilder accused Fury of cheating. He emphasized his condition by pointing out that Fury had bribed the cornermen who poisoned him. Among other things, Fury's gloves clenched suspiciously during a punch, so it was decided to make the third fight between the boxers. And unexpectedly, Wilder was able to knock the champion down with a counter right blow. Fury deletion. Rising from the two heavy knockdowns, the atmosphere of what was happening reminded us of the plot of the well-known movie Rocky, where Wilder was in the role of the main character and absorbed all the damage of his opponent, waiting for the moment for the knockout blow. In the 10th round, Fury sent his opponent to the canvas, 
Then he cut him down with a powerful right punch straight to the temporal part of the head, Mayfall managing once again to turn the fight around and rehabilitate his career. On such a bright note, the trilogy of two legends of their weight class ended, leaving a mark in the whole history of boxing. A little later, this fight will be called Fight of the Year and Fight of the Decade. On the night of October 29, former UFC champion Francis Ngannou nearly pulled off a sensational upset in the ring with Tyson Fury, an iconic event in which Francis Ngannou showcased incredible form and entered the ring ready to die for victory, and Tyson Fury clearly underestimated his opponents. The Cameroonian is the strongest puncher in the history of mankind, and his punch is called Touch of Death. Francis' confidence played to his advantage because for his professional debut in boxing, he didn't look for an average opponent, but he chose one of the best boxers of our time, Tyson Fury. The fight started in an aggressive manner. Tyson Fury immediately ran at his opponent, combining a powerful double jab and an accentuated body punch. He wasn't going to test the power of the Cameroonian, so he immediately decided to strip his opponent of his strength and air. However, Francis saw most of the Brit's punches and evaded them. In this, he was helped by the left-handed stance, in which he worked more successfully than the champion. However, Fury didn't want to take any risks, so he masterfully stretched the fight, clinching and exhausting his opponent. However, in the third round, Tyson, encouraged by his opponent's lack of aggression, pinned Francis against the ropes and tried to break through his defense. But the Cameroonian masterfully knocked the Brit down with a devastating left-side blow. Fury appeared stunned and spent the rest of the round in a deafening defense. The moment was the starting point of the fight, after which the Brit's eyes lit up. Already at the beginning of the fourth round, Fury took the initiative and began to accentuate the defense of his opponent and deliver single punches to the body, changing angles and quickly leaving the line of attack. However, Nganu kept his cool and tried to counter the Brit's punches, but he lacked stamina. He was hitting only the punches towards his opponent, while Tyson started hitting with straight punches. The fight became especially colorful by the eighth round when both boxers decided to go all in. Fury was cautious and hit a double jab to which the Cameroonian responded with overhand and side punches and did not give up hope to knock down the cocky Brit again. Tyson skillfully came out of the attacking line and hit his punches at unpleasant angles for his opponent which gave him an advantage in speed. However, the Cameroonian was too good and the fight went the full distance. As a result of the split decision, Tyson Fury took the victory. Although the decision was quite controversial, Fury was once again able to turn the fight around and recover from a devastating knockdown, which proves his champion's toughness and steely will to win. Tyson Fury's story is a ready-made script for a Hollywood movie. Despite all the hardships and difficulties that life had in store for the Gypsy King, he managed to rise each time after his hopes of his resurrection died. Life is not about how hard you hit or you can give, it's about how many times you can take and still keep moving forward. No matter how Tyson Fury manages his career, he is the one who adds unprecedented interest, intrigue, and show to boxing. A charismatic and disposable anti-hero, he can talk a lot, but he always backs up all his words with confident actions. It is not known who will be his next opponent, but to deny the fact that the next fight to the Brit will be interesting and bright is not possible. Thanks for watching. Bye.